Okay, now this is ludicrous right here. Now they're telling us in this vid that ludicrous. What does it say right here that the cow ludicrous is um wearing an image or a necklace that depicts um that depicts uh the Egyptian goddess. Uh, I guess it's speaking of um or Hathor, um, the goddess of motherhood, magic and um fertility in this um in this video right here. And um for a little bit more on that, check out our video on um uh the golden calf, Negroes and the Golden Calf. That's that's a kind of a link there also under the lost sheep. You know, where the lost sheep had worshipped the the cow. You remember the golden calf. That's another aspect of the bigger picture here. But what we want to speak on briefly right here are the two Enochs. There are two Enochs. And a lot of folks are a little bit confused. You know, we have some so called uh brothers, you know, who are always into some occult thing, you know. You know, want to get into the fifth or the sixth and seventh books of Moses, you know, like, oh, the sixth, seventh book of Moses, that's the real magic or talking some Enochian so called quote, magic, and this is how a lot of niggas get tricked because they're not in the discipline. First of all, what you're doing for 6th and 7th book of Moses, you fool if you don't even know the first five books. The first five books establish the foundation. And um, on this issue of Enochian so-called magic, let's listen to Chris Everard right here. Here's Chris Everard. Let's raise this up a little bit so you can hear this. He's going to explain a little something that we're going to give you. We're going to give you the clue to really understanding where this particular Enochian. Remember, there's two Enochs. This is not speaking of the Ethiopian Enoch. Let's 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 roll. It. that this um, Elizabethan warlock named John D. Um, communicated is something known that they call Enochian magic. But as we mentioned, there are two, there are two Enochs in the Bible. And we should not confuse, we must not confuse. It's fundamental. These are some fundamental basics. We must not confuse the so-called Enochian magic of a one Elizabethan doctor named uh, John D. with the Book of Enoch or the Ethiopic Book of Enoch. But now how do we, how can we document this? Let's see if we can um, document this. So we're going to go off screen for a moment to document this. Okay, right here. Let us, uh, let there be light. Okay, here we go, right here. We're in the scripture, right? Now we're in the book of um, Genesis, right? The book of Genesis. This is chapter 4. Now we're in Genesis chapter 4, the whole Adam and Eve um, story. Now here's Cain, speaking of Cain. And we go further down right here, and we get to verse uh, 16, now, verse 16, it says, the, speaking of, this is a subscription, the first civilization says, And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Right, Cain. Now, Cain is the son of, presumed son of Adam, even more like the 
son of Satan, actually. Cain is actually the son of Satan, but the presumed son of Adam. Now, the Kibra and the Gesh, uh makes that much more clear. The um, Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik in the early chapters to explain the fundamental differences in the face, in the, in the countenance, in the spirit of these two children, Cain and Abel. But here it speaks about after the murder of Abel. Remember what Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ said to those uh, fake-ass Jews of his particular time. And some of them were black, but they were fake. Just like many of these lost sheep, these black folks today are fake too, worshiping, worshiping all the, the idols of, of, and, the, and the false gods of this uh, shitstem known as confusion or mystery Babylon in the spiritual Egypt. It's like the, the, the ludicrous. You know, they said something's ludicrous. Imagine that. But anyway... Right here says that Cain now knew his wife. Well, first of all, Cain, he went out from the presence of the Lord because he couldn't dwell in the Holy Land. This is why enough of these niggas, they can't leave America. They can't leave Babylon. Why can't they leave Babylon? Look in Revelation. says Babylon is a cage. It's a cage of every foul and filthy spirit, every foul bird. And the bird's symbolic, even from ancient Egypt, of the soul. But now it goes on to say, and Cain, Ayan, he went out from the presence of the Lord, yod Hey, wow Hey, yahweh and dwelt in the land of Nod, or Nod, on the east of Eden. Now, if you look right here, it has a subscription right there, right? And the subscription, I think it's C, it says wandering. It says wandering. So he went out to, to wander, just like the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, that whole generation, because they were golden calf worshipers, like these lost Negroes and the artists and all this confusion we see today. But verse 17 says, and Cain knew his wife. That means he had conjugal knowledge of his wife, what we can interpret to say sexual intercourse, and she conceived and bear Enoch. So now Cain he knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. But this Enoch is the son of Cain, is the son of Satan. So now, note this when we talk about Enochian magic. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. This is one of the first examples of people naming cities after themselves after personal people. We see this even with New York. New York is named after Old York in England. And we got a lot of new this and new that over here, which are named after places usually in England, because England is the mother and um, America is the daughter. You understand? The so-called virgin daughter of Babylon. But prophetically speaking, Babylon is about to get fucked. You understand? We're just speaking the gospel, speaking the good news real to you right now. So we have Enoch right here, and it's going to go through Enoch's line. But then when we get down here, we get to the birth of Seth, you understand, who is now the spiritual. We're speaking about the sons of Seth in the real book of Enoch. We'll, we'll get the true story of who the sons of Seth are, the spiritual seed. Now it says that Adam knew his wife, right? Adam knew his wife, and uh, again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. Now remember, Seth should not be confused with um, Seth or Sut of ancient Egypt or the Seth that you've been told about from ancient Egypt. So we're going to show you how there's two Enochs. In other words, names, just because you find one name doesn't mean it's the, same, it's the same person. We have to look for more identifying marks. For God said she, said, said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, instead of Abel, like the lamb that was slain from the foundation, whom 
Cain slew. Now, just as Christ says, he says that ye are of ye are children of your father. You understand the devil because he was a what a murderer from the beginning. So who's the first murderer? Cain. Cain slew. Now in this series of videos about the music industry, we hear Lady uh, Google or Gaga talking about how it's a lie. What they're dealing with, they're monsters, and they will kill. So you know we can trace them back to their 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 spiritual, if not an actual physical father. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Then they began to call upon the name of Yahweh. Now, if we go through the lineage, and we go through the lineage, and we get down here to the lineage, the family of Seth, we can follow down the begats, the begats, the begats. Now we'll get to the seventh, right? We get to the seventh. Here we go right here. We get to the seventh, and it says, uh, and Jared, remember Jared, remember the link with Jared. Jared died basically um, on the date of this um, December 21st. In other words, December 21st, 20. 2012, this is the same date that we have um, Ethiopically, you understand, as Tasis 12, according to the book of Adam and Eve. So, Jared, Yared is very important, because Yared means descendants. Some say the angels descended, some of the fallen angels descended around this time, because in the book of, the real book of Enoch, the Ethiopic Enoch, this is one of the reasons why we distinguish it by calling it the Ethiopic Enoch, so as opposed to the um, Satan or devil Enoch. And that's where Enochian magic is linked not to the Ethiopic Enoch, but the Ethiopic Enoch is linked to the true line, the true line or the righteous line in the scripture. But it says right here, and Jah would live 100, 160 and two years, and he begot Enoch. And Enoch lived after he begot, and Jared lived after he begot Enoch 800 years and begot sons and daughters. And so we go through the Enoch lived three, uh, 60 and, 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 and five years, begot Methuselah. And since Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were what? 300 Sixty and five, or three sixty-five, which is what we how we time a year. All this is about time. And Enoch or Hanoch walked with God, Ha Elohim, and he was not for for God took him, or he was translated. Now another part that we want to just link right here with this, since we're on this subject, particular subject matter, is let's just go to the book of. Um, the book of uh, Jude. Let's just get to the book of Jude for a moment. It's, 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 it's one chapter, the book of Jude, right? The general epistle of Jude. And let's begin around here. The apostate teachers, they're described right here. And this really speaks to this present generation. It says, the apostate teachers, likewise, also these filthy dreamers. You understand the American dream, these filthy dreamers, they defile the flesh, they despise dominion, they speak evil of dignities. Yet Mikael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, Diablos, he disputed about the body of Musa, Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, Gietai Gethusa. In other words, the Lord rebuked thee, but these speak evil of things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beast. See, it's in verse 10, people want to talk about, well, what about this hybrid thing going on where even uh, Jay-Z and, and his under, underling, dingling, um, with Kanye West, and everything like that. A lot of these other artists are doing this hybrid thing between robots and now between beasts. 
check out this verse. But these speak evil of things which they know not. See, there's things they don't know. They don't know what they just don't know. But what they know naturally, what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them. Woe your lot show, for they have gone in the what? The way of Cain. Not in Yah's way, not in Jah's way, but in the, in the way of their father. You understand? who was a murderer from the beginning in the way of Cain, and ran, what it says right here, and ran, and ran greedily after the era of Balaam. Now, there's a subscription here. This is a Schofield Study Bible. You know, take a, take a good study of it right here. It really will explain more on what that is, because people may say the era of Balaam, but then when you ask them, well, what is Balaam? Who is Balaam? What is the doctrine of Balaam? And if you know that, then it's clear what's going on right now because the scripture gives us the beginning and the end and the overstanding. So they ran greedily after the era of Balaam, Balaam, for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kore, the gainsaying of Kore, because for them the earth opened up and swallowed them up. These are spots in your feast of charity or love when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. They feed themselves and don't even say a prayer. They don't, they don't pray to God. They act like God don't exist. They don't know God. But then they talk about they love themselves, who they think created them. Clouds they are without water, but they've made themselves devils. Clouds they are without water. So they look one way, but it's an illusion. Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. It's significant when it says twice dead. You see, because you know there's, there's actually two deaths. It says that, that, that the righteous, the overcomers, won't be hurt of the second death. But everyone has to face or taste or if they have the grace to swallow the first death, raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame. That's what we see in this Gaga, in this Gaga world. Wandering stars, wandering stars. Remember what Nod, Nod meant? Nod meant wandering. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, here's the key of the true Enoch. He was the what? The seventh from Adam. Now, if Cain had a son named Enoch, and Cain is the presumed son of Adam, that's not the seventh. That's like, what, the, the third or so? But here we have Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, of these, saying, Behold, Adonai cometh with ten thousand of his caduce son, of his saints. Now, these saints are not the saints of your so-called Roman Catholic Church. These are the real saints of Adonai, not the saints of the Pope or the Cardinals or the, these man-made saints, so-called. These are ain'ts, the, the ones that you all call saints. But it says, Adonai cometh. Now, these are... The, this is why they got all that weaponry up there in space. This is why they have the satellites looking at all these stars and everything, because they know that our Lord, you understand, in their terminologies, is an ET, an Ethiopian and an extraterrestrial. But he's coming, and they know he's coming. They're trying to prepare, you understand, for his coming by deceiving and, and deluding and soul stealing, psychic snatching, vampirism. But he's coming to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their what hard speeches which ungodly sinners. You see a theme running in this verse 15? Ungodly ungodly sinners have spoken against him, even against Kedemawi Haile Selassie, even against his majesty and his Christ. Why? Because these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words. 
having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. This is that fame. This is that fame shit that they're on. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of Getachina Medhanatachin Jesus Christos or Adonenu Yeshua Hamoshia. How that they told you told you there should be mockers in the last time. And we're living in this last time. You can see the the spokes already falling off the wheel. You know, saying season out of season, some strange things going on. But this is the last time, and there would be mockers. So these who would mock Jah, who would mock God, try to say, "Oh, God is dead." You know, there is no God. These are all mockers who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves. They separate themselves from God. Sensual, sexy, 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 right? Everything sex sells. Sensual. Having not the spirit. Having not the spirit. Now, as you study this, this more, more on, it would tell us as the true uh, amanyo, the true, the true ones with the amen. We're assured, we're comforted. There's a sevenfold duty. We must build up ourselves on our most holy, our most holy faith. Now, before we go, we want to give you some sort of a visualization, you know, a visualization of of the real, the real Enoch. Uh, you still have that on the screen over there, the real Enoch over here. So we have uh, Enoch. We have the Ethiopic Enoch right here. You understand? Let's see. Okay. Yeah. This is this is this is a more accurate image of Enoch. You understand? When we're speaking about the Ethiopic Enoch. You know. So we're gonna to touch on this a little bit more. Um. Let's see something. Let's see if we can bring this. Just rewind, rewind this part so that people can get this part a little bit more in full. You know, play this part. This is from um, the the industry. So it's, it's it's a very good series. Play it. Yeah, play it from around around here, um, where where this guy has his. Yeah, just check this out right here. themselves. 
his results. For results, the magician still depends today, as he did thousands of years ago, on methods and techniques. Since time immemorial, magicians have placed themselves and others in the states of trance, during which visions and oracles were received. We now know that this process was hypnotic, and that all the phenomena we have come to associate with modern hypnosis was in fact known and practiced by ancient sorcerers under the guise of fascination, spellcasting, and enchantment. Thank you. 